Grab yeah. a second adrenaline. Look at that. Easy, sir, easy. When did this become this bad? One hospital. Grab a step, please. Seven junior doctors. Showtime. I've got an emergency, so I need the crash team here. I'm excited. A little bit nervous. Working on the front line of medicine. Do you want to have a chat? Oh. With all its blood. I love a gory, bloody wound. <laughs> Sweat. Try not to worry. And tears. It just feels like I'm surrounded by death at the moment. The doctors of your future. Can I ask what's brought you in today? I slipped on my wedding dress. Facing life. <laughs> and then I got to hold the baby as well. Lion King moment. And death. Have they got Stand back. what it takes? Wolverhampton, home to one of the largest teaching hospitals in the black country, New Cross Hospital. Second year junior Dr. Jin is starting his first week in the emergency department. <coughs> well, that's quite a cough you've got there, haven't you? 26 year old Jin was born in South Korea. He left for London with his mum and dad when he was five years old. We moved to England because my dad had a calling to become a reverend here, to set up a Korean church for, you know, Korean people living in England. Yes. I am always praying for you. In his second year, Jin has already completed stints on clinical oncology and psychiatry. As a second year doctor, it's more about the level of responsibility. So people, so the nurses and the staff around you, will expect more from you. Have you had blood tests since you've come in today? No blood tests at all. Yeah. So when you get called to see an unwell patient, you're expected to know more things. You're expected to manage it in a more professional, more senior manner. Okay, so I've read through your information, so we don't need to repeat what's happened. You went to see the... I am repeating what's happened, aren't I? Not only does Jin hold a degree in medicine, but he also considers himself a master of comedy. So uh, I think I'm funny. I'm seeing a lot of young female patients, and it's good. <laughs> <coughs> It's a joke, man. I'm not sure my friends might agree. With having a right, a sarcastic sense of humour, it's very good if used rightly for relieving tension and bringing that smile to people's faces in everyday what can be at times a stressful NHS environment. So one of the consultants just randomly grabbed me and said, have you done a nasogastric tube before? I said, no, I haven't had the opportunity. I have seen them being done. So he said, yeah, come and you know, do one and I'll supervise you. So I agreed to it because it's a great learning experience. Even in their second year, junior doctors will still encounter new procedures. Keep your head still, follow my finger with your eyes. This might unnerve some people, but not Jin. Good communication skill helps. Putting a man at ease, acting confident when inside you you're 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 panicking and you're not you're not feeling good. But it's all about how you appear outside. With everything in life, isn't it? It's all about how you appear outside. You know? Why are you whispering? Huh? Why are you whispering? The patient's there. But I am confident. I am confident, very confident, that trust in me as a doctor and as a human being. Today, Jim will be assisting consultant, Mr. Manakatu. It's a bit like flying Superman. He jumps from one place to another and you can't find him. Mr. Manakatu, is he around? You gonna fly back here anytime or... I've got other patients to see and stuff. I can't hang around here forever. But don't, don't like, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't say anything to him. Just like, just, oh, just casually. Oh, oh, oh hi, Mr. Manikut. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. Are you ready? Yeah, yes, man. Well, not well. Hi, Jules. Good morning. Sorry. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. 
You ready? The emergency department. With the help and guidance of senior consultant Mr. Manakatu, junior Dr. Jin is about to perform his first ever nasogastric tube insert. What you, you might want to do is to flex his neck mm. when you, as you push through. You can actually ask him to swallow it himself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they can just do that by doing that themselves. So let's take it out. Do you want to help him out? I'm just going to come in a second. Suddenly, Mr. Manakatu is called away leaving the young doctor with Nurse Amajit to complete the procedure. So am I doing it and you're supervising me? Or is he coming back to supervise me? What, what's the plan? OK, we can just do it. You all right, sir? Oh, we don't want to make you too uncomfortable, sir. Yeah? Is that all right, sir? Whatever you can manage. Down a bit, down a bit, I think. That's good. That's good. So. When you feel it, try swallowing it. It will go along with easily. Okay? Yeah. Go on. Don't worry, sir. The, the key is to relax and not panic. Okay. And just swallow as much as you can. OK, sir. You ready? Yeah. All right, sir. So I can feel the blockage. So what do I do? A bit more pressure. Do I tilt it at an angle? No, just, just put a bit of pressure on. on oh, this doesn't seem to be going in. You all right, sir? That's not been together. No. Oh. Oh. What did you do that I didn't Just do? Put a bit extra. I did. It's gone. It's a lady's touch, sir. It's a lady's touch. Keep swallowing. It's important that Jin inserts the tube correctly, otherwise it could get stuck in the patient's windpipe. Oh, yeah. Keep swallowing. Swallow, swallow, swallow. Don't worry. Swallow, 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 swallow. Can you get a ball, please? Jin is struggling, but Mr. Manakatu is on hand. So, how are we doing? I've managed to get it in up to here. OK, sometimes what happens, it tends to curl in the mouth. First thing is, bring it down so you can access. Okay. Going to gently lower this down, sir. Sir, so what we're going to do is work this together, OK? When I push it, it's already in. You just have to gently swallow it, OK? That way you're not fighting it, all right, sir? Swallow that for me, sir. That's it. That's brilliant. That's fine. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, it's in. See? Ah, oh, now you get okay. the stomach contact. Right. Yeah. Just swallow it a bit. Okay. okay. In the right place. Ah. That was easy. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It's all done. All Thank right? you, sir. You feel better now. Thank you. How did you find that procedure? It went in definitely in the right place. Okay, I can tell good. it wasn't in the um, trachea or the bronchi. Okay. I could definitely tell it was in the esophagus, the way he was, you know, the, the reflex with the swallowing. Yeah. But it was just sort of reassuring the patient and going at the right pace. As long as you get the patient, patient, you know, to be confident about you, yeah. then half, half the battle is won. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, no Mr. Problem. Manikachi. Thank no you. Problem. Yeah, he's saying good job, Jin, in two ways. One, to encourage me, and two, because maybe I didn't completely flop. So. <laughs> It's good. It's like you've learned a new skill as a doctor and you feel a bit more, a bit, a bit more competent. Across town, Jin has another urgent procedure to deal with, the weekly shop. Microwave food for the night shift. In a and &E, I'm finding it harder to eat regularly. You only get a half hour break for the entire shift. It's not 100% healthy, but I try my best. Like, I won't eat unhealthily every day. Hot dogs. Hey. <laughs> I think I'm done. Just a few more snacks and that's it. Oh, yes. Snacks are the most important thing in life. Well, not the most, but it's really important. Like, because I, I have a sweet tooth. I need it. I'm addicted. For the ward. Junior Dr. Jin lives on the hospital campus in Halls. He's getting ready for his shift. Essentially, it means I'll be at the front line of the battlefield, treating patients, being the first point of contact when they're brought in by the ambulance or they come in by the GP or themselves. 
26-year-old Jin has dreamt of being a doctor since he was 16. I'm a nice person, but I like to win and I like to, you know, give my best shot at everything that I do. Medicine is his first love. But he has another. There's nothing better than smashing the drums out at the end of the day. I wouldn't go as far as say I'm a rock god. Um, <laughs> well, a doctor by day and a rock god by night. <laughs> Jin's placement is in the emergency department, the busiest place in the hospital, seeing up to 450 patients a day. This is a 49-year-old male gentleman who has a highly unpronounceable name. Um, he has attended ANE more than eight times in the last two, three weeks, all with a similar problem, alcoholic intoxication, He's had all sorts of problems. He's had fractures, he's had head injuries, he's had fits. Surprisingly, his liver's quite stable, though. Jin's patient is Mr. Alvidas Romas, a homeless man from Lithuania and a known regular to staff in the emergency department. You know when you fell? Yeah. Did you uh, lose consciousness? No. No? no. Why did you fall? Because uh, you, you, you unsteady? Yeah. Because you drink too much? If I drink, I don't walk. I just fall. Yeah. Is that why you fell and hurt your yeah, face? Yeah. Because you drink and... So you drink, yeah? And then you feel unsteady and you fall. Is that right? No, I take it. You want to take it from a cigarette and I can fall down. Okay. <laughs> Jin needs to carry out a medical assessment to check for other injuries. Can you hear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hear? Yes. You see, how many? Two. Three. Four. Two. OK. Keep your head still. Follow my finger. Follow my finger. Mr. Alvidas Romas was previously admitted to hospital with a fractured wrist and finger, but he left without treatment and his finger has now become infected. Painful. Yeah. Painful. You see the injury? Yeah. We would bandage. Yeah. Clean. And then we send you home, OK? Good? Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, you want to eat? You want food? Yeah. I'll see what we can do, okay? I'll ask the nurses, okay? Oh, yeah. We'll bandage the wound, the clean, and then eat, and then you go, okay? Oh, yeah. Good? Yeah. Good man. Satisfied that he is well enough to be discharged, Jin leaves him with the nurses to have his wounds treated. Hello? We're going to get that um, finger a bit of a clean. Is that okay? Mm. Obviously, it's like two sides to a coin. Um, these patients, they come in almost every day, you know. Some patients, like, come in, like, 10-plus times a day, and they often come in, they hang around, they either self-discharge or come in for just food or whatnot. And really, they, they are sort of, you know, using up bed space, you know, wasting resources in a way. But then on the other side of the coin, sometimes they come in and there is actually something wrong with them. Like the case that I had last week where there was a patient who's very similar to this guy, homeless, living in the streets, multiple attendances, and he came in and he was severely septic and unwell with a massive infection in the eye, threatening to spread to his brain. So it, 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 it's like, you know, it could become a case of the boy who cried wolf. You still have to do the full examination. You all right? Miss Greenman?
Jin, Joe and Emeka are meeting up with some of their fellow junior doctors for some time away from the hospital. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, I will laugh at that. No, no, no. Dad, no, what are you saying? <laughs> What's good, bro? But instead of giving their brains a rest, they're taking on Escape Live. Okay, are you all ready to go? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Would you like to all follow me, please? Great. It's a group challenge where you have to get out of a locked room by collecting clues and solving puzzles. Oh, look. They, bro, these are coordinates for this, I think. Oh, wait, no, look at the Constitution. Oh, right. What, what month is, is the missing, missing sign? sign? Is August, oh, but how do I put it? Is it definitely? August. Wait, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, look. There's Libra's hand. It's July. 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 Love pirates. Eight minutes. Oh. All right. Red, 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 yellow, blue, red, red, yellow, green, blue. Something's got to happen. Yes. Yes. That was a good song. Hey, you did a good work. You didn't sing it well, but... I'm not singing it. <laughs> I feel like I yeah. here for a while. Uh, I love the war. Did you ever think as a child that you'd ever be an actual doctor? True, yeah. I never thought I'd actually be a doctor. True. So, thought like a good And now you are. Even little things felt like big things, like prescribing paracetamol. Like, everyone has paracetamol. Terrifying. Home, so that was like, oh, my God. I'm doing Terrifying. That. Yeah, Every single thing I had to, like, triple check. First, yeah, the, yeah, first, the yeah. first time I ever prescribed paracetamol, I looked in the BNF online, and then I went for the BNF book as well, just to double check that the double check that the BNF was the same. And it's just paracetamol. I, I went through the patient, I went through the weight, I went through the allergies ten times. I then went and examined the patient <laughs> before prescribing the paracetamol, just because I was like, oh, I don't. Yeah. There's so much that you yeah. can't learn in medical school. Come on, but that's the good thing one. about. That's what I like. Every day I go in and I learn something new. Just 12 miles north of Birmingham is New Cross Hospital in Wolverhampton. The hospital is home to one of the busiest emergency departments in the West Midlands, treating over 130,000 patients a year. Second year junior Dr. Jin is starting his shift in the emergency department. Really don't want to be working, I'm shattered right now. Struggled to get up this morning. Well, my first meeting, I'm hoping it will be really quiet. Because I'm tired, man. It's his sixth shift this week, and it's taking its toll on his body. Oh, man, I've got tummy pain. Oh, oh man. My bowels are just, oh, I think it's just impacted, you know. But I'm sure you've been constipated before, you know. Not, not nice. <laughs> it takes ages to open and, oh, let's just stop, man. Let's... <laughs> South Korean-born Jin has always had very high standards. When I make mistakes, I think I take it harder on myself than other people do. I try my best not to make mistakes because emotionally it upsets me. It makes me feel rubbish about myself. I would be a doctor even if the pay wasn't as good. <laughs> the core of being a doctor is about who you are, is about the profession, is about treating patients, caring for people. That's what I believe. Even though Jin isn't feeling at his best, his first patient of the day is waiting. 80-year-old Kenneth has come into the emergency department for the second time after a series of falls. OK, so how can I help you? What's happened? In the last week, I've had three falls. The, the fall that brought you in today, you didn't hit your head or anything? No, I just slid, I just slid down onto the, mm. onto the carpet. Mm. OK, sir. And I'm quite heavy and I can't get up. Why couldn't you get up? Too much weight. Too much weight. So that's sort Too of... Too fat. Oh, come on, sir. That's, that's usual for you, though. I mean, as in, like, that... Not really usual. <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Well, I don't mean it in that way, sir. I don't mean it in that way, sir. OK, sir. Sorry, I just got a stomach. Ah. Rumbling stomach, rumbling do, stomach. Do you want me to get a doctor? <laughs> uh, hey! <laughs> With a medical complaint of his own, Jin needs to quickly finish seeing the patient. 
I'll discuss with the consultant whether we need to do another CT of their head because we've, we've already done one in the last yeah, couple of days yeah. and it sounds like a mechanical fall. It's just because you're on warfarin, it could increase the risk of bleeding in your, in your, in your brain with falls. I'll see you again, sir, yeah. when the blood test results are back. I'll come back in again. You will come in three then? All right, yep, yeah, I will do. All right. All right, take care, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, no worries. I need to go to the toilet. Even the busiest junior doctor can't ignore the call of nature. Uh. In the emergency department, Jin is back from an unscheduled break. I just went to the toilet. I just, I'm just relieved. I just, you don't need to know. It's, it's, it's good. I just went to the toilet and had a big motion myself. Oh, lovely. Not, not that you needed to know Do that. But yeah. <laughs> I spent 20 minutes in there, man. So I was in the yeah. toilet for 20 minutes, so it slowed me down. He was you. He was in toilet. I was in toilet in 20 minutes. <laughs> Impacted. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> All right. So I'm not being deliberately slow. <laughs> I'm telling everyone. <laughs> Junior doctors struggle when they start. Number one is a longer shift. Number two is a changing shift pattern. You start with the morning, come lunchtime, then evening, night. Their digestive system is upset and they sleep. I'm just like letting people know where I was for the last 20 minutes. 26 year old junior Dr. Jin is halfway through his shift. You do? And you've got half an hour and you fix it. No pressure. I'm going to mine because it's busy then. The emergency department at New Cross Hospital treats over 350 people a day. I need to just do his treatment charts. Like all the doctors in the department, Jin is under pressure to see his patients within the hospital's target time limit. 90% of patients either have to be sent from the ED department up to the ward or sent out discharged within four hours. So if the patient's still here and it's four hours, then that means that we've gone over the limit. Jin, Jones, the plan on that man with the arm. Oh, is he back? I, I from the x-ray? OK. She just wants to plan what... OK, no worries. He's going to breathe, isn't he? C could you give me just five minutes? I'll be back. Just need a quick, please. A quick discharge. Right yep, yep, yep. So we're trying our best to keep to that four hours, which is chaotic and hard because how can you expect us to do that when it's understaffed? There's lack of junior doctors, lack of staff resources. Behind it all, we're always stressed out. We're all working hard for our patients. But we're trying our best and it's not falling apart. It's still, you know, yeah. going. But a lot can be done to change the system, I think. Having avoided breaching the four-hour time limit with one patient, Jin returns to Mrs. Chu, who's suffering from severe dizziness. Sorry, sorry. Just had to quickly discharge a patient. Can you give us a water sample? Or... Mm -hmm. So if you can provide us with a water sample, get one of the nurses to do a line and standing blood pressure. If that's all normal, then we can, we can discharge you. Okay. And we'll try to get you out as soon as possible. OK, no worries. Jin wants to measure her blood pressure when she's standing and sitting to see if it's causing her dizziness. If the blood pressure is dropping for when you're lying and then standing up, you're going to get dizzy and faint because your blood pressure is dropping. That's her sitting and that's her standing blood pressure. Only she's going to the youth. Whoa, whoa, it's quite high here, isn't it? There's a greater than 20 difference as well, isn't there? There's a bit of a postural drop in blood pressure. Jin is concerned about his patient's blood pressure results and checks with senior consultant Dr. Galani. Standing's a bit high, it's 198, it's greater than 20 drop. But she basically. No, no, sorry, standing goes up. Yeah, it goes up. So that oh, it's not a drop, isn't yeah, it? So, oh, better. God. Oh, I'm not thinking yeah, straight right better. now. I'm not thinking straight. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> sorry about that. Clearly, I'm tired. <laughs> I can't do simple maths. It's not a drop, it's actually increased. <laughs> it's just... Can I go on a quick break? Go on a... Quick break. Break? Yes. Break. What's break, guys? <laughs> Is that a quick break? break? What's a quick break? Break? Yeah. Why are we going earlier? <laughs> we asked the part of the EU and the working time director Off we go. Advise. You should have gone earlier, man. <laughs> Jin finally gets to eat his lunch, seven hours into his shift. I'm going to get a little political, right? When I say this, I mean no offence to the politicians at the top, right? Unless you work on the front line as a junior doctor and as a nurse and as, you know, all the staff, you don't know what it's like unless you experience it. So they're only counting statistics and numbers 
and looking at the budget and determining, you know, and it's all good. That's good. That's what you, that's what you need as well. But I think we need more doctors, more senior doctors and more junior doctors who represent us to sit on the table to advise the politicians to keep the NHS alive. They need to keep us alive. They need to keep us moralised. They need to keep the staffing levels alive. And at the moment, I don't see it happening. It's nearing the end of Jin's shift. Oh. Tired, man. And the emergency department is reaching its busiest time of day. Does it always get this busy at night? Of course. Is it because there's less doctors on at night? Is that why? Or... Yeah. Oh. And more patients. Is that your left side? Your left hip? On my right. On your right hip. Suddenly, the emergency alarm goes off. What's going on? A patient has gone into cardiac arrest. Jin needs to get to them, and fast. Every second counts, and he must quickly assess what needs to be done. Oxygen. The ambulance crew are pumping the chest to keep the blood flowing around the body whilst the heart has stopped. Come on, grab a step, please. Jin carefully monitors the patient's pulse for two minutes. Is that going to time two minutes? To check for a sign that they can try and restart the heart by shocking it with an electric current. Shockable rhythm. Press charge, yeah? Wait, charging. Everybody stand clear. Stop. Can you check the pulses, please? No problem. Shockable rhythm. Do I press charge? Charge, please. Stand back. Stand back. Shocking. Okay. Continue. Rhythm's back. Rhythm's back. Check for pulse. Okay, At last, a pulse has been detected in the patient, and she's come round, disorientated but alive. It's 11 p.m. and Jin has finally finished his shift. 12 hours after it started. I've worked long hours every day. I feel shattered, I feel tired. When you experience things like this, it keeps you going and it reminds you that you are making a difference. You feel gratified in the sense that the patients survived and you know you were there doing your little part. And that's a, that's a rewarding feeling. It makes everything else worthwhile. All the other emotions and the crap and all the all the politics about the NHS and all the demoralization and you know all the staff shortage, you know, all that becomes secondary in a sense, after events like this. I feel a little emotional now. <laughs> Cardiac arrest is the ultimate life and death situation in medicine. It doesn't get any more life and death than this. Twenty-six-year-old Jin is at home, getting ready for his first night shift in the emergency department. I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, should be similar to a day shift, except that it's night time, so I'm gonna be tired and all that. And yeah, let's see how it is. Never done it before. As long as it's not crazy busy, then I'm cool. I am a perfectionist. When I was younger, it was more sort of disadvantageous to me because I'll take longer to do things. I used to always be the last one out of the classroom because I'd be packing my bags. I was a bit of a bit of a, a bit of an idiot when I was growing up, <laughs> in my eyes anyway. I thought you finished last week. Where? Here. When? 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 I thought like. When was that going to happen? I thought you're you're finishing. I'm a part of the furniture, man. One of Jin's first patients of the night is Mr Khan. He's suffering from a shortness of breath. Two weeks ago, 65-year-old Mr Khan suffered a heart attack on a trip to Pakistan. Why? Lose your colour. Really suits you. Oh, does it? Thank you. Thank you. He's being held in infection control as he's recently returned from foreign right, travel. We've done a heart trace, which hasn't shown evidence of heart attack. But in the blood test we do, it's worthwhile to do the troponin, which measures whether there's been heart damage. The second thing, and the most important thing, I think, is whether he's got an infection and whether the infection might be something that he contacted from Pakistan, which is why we've been a bit cautious. So we need to put a needle in him and give him some... He's obviously dry, so give him some fluids and 
start dose of IV antibiotics. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? Or? No, that's fine. OK, no worries. Just want him uh, back. Back to normal. Back to normal. We'll leave it with me. We'll sort it out, OK? OK. All right, sir. You understand or...? OK, good stuff. To find out what's wrong with Mr Khan, Jin needs to take some blood. Not quite. I'll have one. I'll have another go. Don't worry, I'll get it in. As I expected to get some blood. Just cannula. Yeah. Someone else to have a go. Jim has been unable to find a vein. One sec. Get one of the seniors. Yeah. Hey man, you any good at cannulas? I'm pretty good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, make, make me feel like crap. Make me feel like crap, yeah. Senior Dr. Raul steps in to help Jim cannulate Mr. Khan. ECG shows tachycardia. Yeah, all smooth, man. OK, so, yeah. you on that? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll Thanks, sort. man. I'll, I can take care of the rest. Do the blast before right. they clock first. Yeah. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right. All good. I don't feel great. Low self-esteem at the moment. But, uh, can't be 100% perfect. He had difficult veins, though, so... So... It's 4.30 a.m., and Jin is seven hours into his night shift. He's called to treat 29-year-old Mr Martin, who's been suffering with a severe headache for the past 12 hours. Did it come on suddenly or gradually? Gradually. gradually. Yeah. And is it in the front of your head? Both sides? Let me see. Oh, if you're sick, do you? Have you actually vomited at all? Yeah. You had these things. <laughs> okay. As a child, Mr. Martin suffered from hydrocephalus, a buildup of water on the brain. To treat this, a shunt was inserted into his head to drain the fluid down a tube oh. and into his chest. Is it getting worse? <laughs> Unsure what to do next, Jin asks senior doctor Jason for help. He's got no visual disturbance, but he's got nausea and he's just vomited quite a fair bit when, like, purple foodie contents. He does have headaches occasionally. He's got, he's got a VP yeah, shunt. Yeah. yeah. OK. Uh, he's going to need a CT scan then. He's got a shunt. OK, OK, shunt series. Yeah. Uh, what painkillers has he had? None. He's had codeine, paracetamol, ibuprofen, none of, cocodone, none of them have worked, according to them. What's his pain score? 10. Ten. He's shivering in pain, he can't lift his head. But can you give him a bit stronger? Yeah. Uh, let me sort the CT out. So blood cannula and CT. Bring him down this end as well. Yeah. Major CT. Yeah. So I'm going to put a needle in your arm, and we're going to give you some IV painkillers, and they will take the pain away, OK? Before continuing the assessment, Jin needs to give Mr. Martin intravenous pain relief. Sharp scratch. Yet again, this involves cannulating. You okay? Yeah. I might have it evolved, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Try again. I think I hit a valve. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure this is nothing compared to the headache you're having. Mr. Martin hasn't suffered from hydrocephalus since he was a child. Oh dear. I'm not having a very good day today. If the shunt in his head has become disconnected, the hydrocephalus could have returned. Sorry, sir. You okay?
On the fourth attempt at cannulating, Jin is successful. Mr. Martin can now receive morphine to relieve his pain. Okay, sir. All done. All done. All right, I think they're just waiting for you. If you hop onto that chair, sir. A CT scan will determine if the shunt has become disconnected. I don't think it's my day today for cannulating. It's like they don't want to go in. I never had to have that many attempts, usually. Don't know what's going on. Uh, with this guy, like the other guy that I failed, uh, I didn't feel as confident. This guy, I felt that I can get it, you know. I don't, I don't know why I wasn't getting it the first time, because I should have got that in, but hey, that's life, you know. You miss some, you get some. <laughs> so it's gonna, like, get the results of the CT scan are back. Skull x-ray, you can obviously this tube is the shunt. Uh, and there's a disconnect here. That's quite obvious, yeah. So mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. and I'm probably sorry. there as well. Yeah, I'm sorry. Although well, one's not quite as clear. Mm. Uh, so you need to get a Norse referral on the system to the QE. Presumed new hydrocephalus and spitting of the shunt on the skull view. So there you go, there's the shunt again. You see the ventricles are significant, yeah. significantly yeah. bigger. Which is why he's got a headache and why he's vomiting. He needs more painkillers as well, just give him some more morphine. All right? That's fine, yeah. Thank you. Hydrocephalus. It is hydrocephalus, so they have to have surgery or some interventions to reconnect the shunt so that it's draining properly. So sort of the worst case scenario that could happen in this case. The condition Mr. Martin suffered from as a child has returned. He'll now be transferred to a hospital 20 miles away in Birmingham for surgery to repair the shunt. I'm still a little pissed off about that cannula failure, to be honest. Not the second patient, the first patient. I'm not happy with the role, just with the way he walked in like a boss and did it like, like it's a matter of fact thing, and I tried so hard. It made me feel very small, that did. Twenty-five-year-old Jin is about to start a nine-hour shift in the emergency department of Wolverhampton's New Cross Hospital. I have to remark on the fabulous weather that is far and in between and rare in the British culture, isn't it? So we have to enjoy this web, bright weather, but unfortunately I am working. And I hope it's a sunny a &E in the sense that everything will be smooth and chilled. So let's go for it. Jin is a second year junior doctor. However, he didn't always have that ambition. I wanted to be an accountant. I wanted to, to do business. At one point, I even wanted to be a Hollywood actor, believe it or not. Obviously, I'm not good looking enough, but... <laughs> But all those things crossed my mind. But obviously, you can tell that none of them were suited to me. I won't be able to survive without coffee. Why not? Addiction, habit, compulsive behaviour. There you go. Thank you. There it looks busy, man. I think that expression said it all. <laughs> On an average shift, Jim will see around 10 patients. How can I help you today? One of those today is football fan Mr Fowler. He's come in with a suspected abscess. Is the abscess in the belly button or...? They don't, they don't know. They, he just said it was an abscess that burst. Yeah, I can't see any abscess. No. What's got... coming out of the belly button? What's in blood that's coming out of it? I'm getting pain right across my stomach. So now, right now, would you say it's gone better a lot? No, it smells worse. How bad's the pain? It gets to about seven. And is it sharp or dull? Or... Uh, sharp. No fever, no shakes or agors? Yeah, no I've been getting shakes and... If you wait, I'll be back, all right, no, so... Okay, no problem. 
in a bit. As a junior member of the team, Jin must check in with senior colleagues to ensure he's making the right decisions. The only thing that makes any difference in terms of morbidity and mortality in somebody who's, uh, who's septic is the speed at which they get antibiotics. I couldn't see any visible abscess on the outside. Well, neither can I. Yeah. But that, that I don't find reassuring, that I find worrying. But wouldn't he be really unwell? Uh, but he's getting there. The consultant is concerned Mr. Fowler is at risk of sepsis, a potentially fatal infection. Jin urgently needs to give medication and take a blood sample to rule this out. We'll keep you updated. We'll give you the antibiotic and we'll put you on a drip, sir. We'll see what the blood tests show. You might have to come into hospital. Um, but uh, let's take it a step at a time. At the moment, we're treating him like he's going to get really unwell. You know, we're putting in lining, we're giving him fluids, IV antibiotics, I'm doing a whole range of bloods, we're going to call the surgeons, you know, we're treating him like he, he's going to get really unwell. But we'll see how unwell he gets. In the emergency department, Jin is still ruling out life-threatening sepsis for Mr Fowler, who has a suspected abscess. I wish I could make the call decision myself, but I don't have, unfortunately I'm too junior for that and I don't have the relevant experience or knowledge to do that. I want to be the best though, the best, I want to be the best junior doctor. His condition hasn't deteriorated, so Jin now needs to consult the on-call surgeon about the next step. Discharge is coming out of the belly button, yellow, yeah. foul smell and discharge. He's not unwell, he's well on himself, is he? He's he is uncomfortable, just sharp umbilical pain, 7 yeah. out of 10 severity. If it's not a proper abscess, there is nothing we can offer because this is not a surgical problem, just the course of antibiotics would be more than enough. The patient's blood tests are back. And it's good news. Let's see. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, he looks fine. Okay. I was spoken to the surgeon and he doesn't need to be omitted. Hi, sir. I've spoken to the surgeon. And they feel that you don't need to be admitted. We've measured your blood, blood culture, you know, we've looked at your observations. I've spoke, I've had a word with the general surgeon and they feel that you don't need to be in hospital. Okay, so what is it? Do they know? It could just be, you know a superficial infection, not necessarily an internal abscess. If it's an internal abscess, you'll be very, very unwell. So we're happy to discharge you. Jin has been working long hours for several weeks in the emergency department. It's now seven hours into his shift, and a patient has been brought in who's overdosed on antidepressants and painkillers. 28 uh, metazapine. Approximately 20 cocodamol, how many in the proxy? What's his GCS? Examining motor, verbal, and eye response, Jin needs to rate the patient's level of consciousness on what's known as the Glasgow Coma Scale. Jin must be accurate with his GCS score so the team can monitor whether the patient is deteriorating. So next time I'll do that if I can't wake up a fish. Dr. Qureshi has some questions about his assessment. How did you make out the GCS? So, mo motor, verbal and pain, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, motor, verbal and pain. Is it pain? Which medical school did you go to? Uh, <laughs> no, but motor, verbal and uh, what was the last one? Oh. So I'm just really Do you tired. want me to leave you alone now? <laughs> kind Have you of. had enough? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Are you? When are you in next? <laughs> Tomorrow. Okay. Well, on Monday. Are you in on Monday? No. Okay. Well, yeah. Are you in on Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. On Tuesday, I want. I will ask you. Yeah. The Glasgow Coma Scale, the components and how you measure it. And yeah. if you don't know it by then, I'll tell your supervisor. Okay. You know I'm watching. Okay. So thank you. Not very happy, obviously. I know she's just joking, but she's just embarrassed me in front of everyone. Sometimes, you know, you can take it too far, I think. How do you feel? How would you feel if you were embarrassed like that in front of everyone? They're not kids, they are, they are doctors, they are all adults, we're all professionals. And it was not really telling off, but it was trying to make Jin realise the importance of basic principles of assessment in an acutely unwell patient. And essentially that is 
the essence of his job in emergency medicine. And if he's not able to do that, uh, then I think it's a failure on our part as well as consultants that we are not giving him that proper teaching and training. You cannot work in an emergency department and not know what a Glasgow Comma skill and its competence are. Just had a long day and I just, for some reason, my mind just switched off. I guess it was the pressure, everyone was watching me and um, it's just, <laughs> my mind went blank. Jin's confidence has taken a knock this week. So, off shift, he's meeting up with senior colleague and friend Raul to get some advice. Oh, oh man. Hey, man. So, how's it going? Yeah, I had a run in with uh, Dr. Karashi. Oh, yeah. Uh, she grew me about the glass coma skill. Oh, yeah. And um, it was oh, yeah. just like, I was. I, had, I heard about this. Yeah. You heard about it. Heard oh, about little about bird told you, yeah? Little yeah, bird yeah. being the hall yeah. of the yeah. NE. Yeah. Mate, you see, <laughs> it's, it's a little fishbowl, man. Whatever you do, everyone knows about it the next day, man. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's all right. No, it's all basically, right. Like, it was the end of a nine, ten hour shift. Yeah. I was wrecked. Yeah, yeah. You know, you were just my mind went blank, and it was just the pressure of everyone looking at me. Yeah, I think with that kind of stuff, you know it. You know, if I were to ask you about it now, you'd be able to tell me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. But as in, you know, when you're so tired, you can barely think. I was quite similar. There would have been like days where I did everything right. And I'm like, you know, your level of confidence grows. And then because of that, you come across more stuff and you think you can do it yourself. Yeah, I've had but that. Then, exactly. Yeah. But then some days I'll be like, yeah, I'm on this yeah, man. I'm some yeah, I'm like one yeah. of the most confident FDs yeah, that yeah. in A and E, right? Yeah. And then, and then another day yeah, it comes yeah. crashing. Yeah, exactly. And you miss something huge. Yeah. 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 And you're like, oh, I can't believe I missed that. That's true, um, that's and, true. And, that's and then true. all of a sudden, yeah. It was a good thing. I know it's not the nicest thing being criticised in front of your staff and stuff. Yeah, I find it difficult because you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. You, you're going to make mistakes. Because mm. even sometimes I'm like, yeah, I, I can boss this. But when I'm feeling out of depth, um, I, I'm not afraid to ask for help. Jin is coming to the end of working a week of late shifts. Do you want to know the reason why I love tuna so much? It's because I'm really good on the drums and I can play a tuna. He's been called to assess a patient with a persistent nosebleed. How can I help you today? N nosebleed. Nosebleed, yeah. Both nose or one nostril? One nose. A continuous? Continuous. No other symptoms? No, no, no. With the help of ENT Dr. Uman, Jin cauterizes the septum, the cartilage that divides the nose. Cheers, man. Thanks. You did the cauterizing very well and um, achieved the right result. So we, we're just going to use the cream and send the patient home. All right? Yeah, thank you. No worries. This is what, exactly what they mean when you say junior doctor learn on the job. Now that I've seen one, I should be able to do it by myself. There's different ways of learning on the job. You can be grilled by a consultant, which isn't particularly nice. Good work. Handsome henchman <laughs> dealing with the patient. There's learning from patients themselves. Yeah, it's all sort of collaborative. They come together to, to give you an experience, really. After struggling to recall the Glasgow Coma Scale on a previous shift with Dr. Qureshi, Jin has done some important revision. Hello, Jin. How are you? Hi, Dr. Karashi. I'm very well, thank you. You okay? Yes. What did we learn then? So, in terms of it's E4, M6, and V5. Okay. E4 would be opening eyes simultaneously, yeah. or opening eyes to voice, or opening eyes to pain, or not opening eyes at all. Okay. Motor would be obeys commands, or localizes yeah. the pain or withdraws from the pain, flexes to the pain, extends to the pain, or doesn't respond at all. OK. And voice would be uh, fully alert, or yeah. disorientated, or confused, yeah. or uttering inappropriate words, yeah. or uttering completely incomprehensive sounds. So why do you think it's so important? So it's important to assess GCS um, because you need to see the level of impairment consciously, yes. which would guide sort of future management neurologically. Uh, I hope you didn't feel that I was very harsh. At the time I did, but <laughs> then, because I sort of knew how to do it, but I didn't know it inside out, bang, bang, okay. bang, like but this. Now, but then now I do, so it's definitely been so, beneficial to me in the long term. I right feel now. like a real doctor. You feel like a real doctor? No, I'm not saying that I don't before, so but like... Are no, 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 no. Not real oh, God. Yet. No, well, you know what I'm saying. No, I didn't mean it in that way. Retrospectively, it's actually improved me as a doctor, you know. Because you've had this viral pleurisy for three weeks, it's going to put a lot of strain on your muscle, yeah. and particularly the muscle lining your rib cage and the lung, yeah. because it's getting irritated by all the cough. Before, it, I was okay, but it's definitely developed me in that regard.
and it has been a painful learning experience, but one, no doubt, that's made me a better doctor. It's nearing the end of Jin's shift, when Dr Qureshi comes to say goodbye. She's leaving the department. <laughs> See you, Dr Qureshi. See you, Dr Qureshi. It's been a pleasure. The short time we know each other. It's the short time we have known each other. Yes, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Yeah, if I end no. up going to Preston, is it? Yeah. I have friends in Preston, so I might. Can you come and see me then? They might be working there, actually. You might bump into them. So Once, where are you going to tell them not to see this doctor? I'll warn yeah, them about you. Stay away from I'll her. warn them about you. Warn them I will give them me. a heads up yeah. on the WhatsApp right. group. I'll be best like. of luck. I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, thank you, okay? thank you. All right. But generally, thank you. You know, best thank of luck you. with everything. Thank, thank you very much. You. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come in.